Hey folks, <sighs> nice to see ya. My name is Dustin Cormier and welcome to How to Rock Astrology. Today's episode we're going to be talking about the sun in Libra. What it's like when a person has the sun in Libra with Mars in Capricorn. <clears throat> uh, essentially how this energy plays out is that Mars is doing a really good job of uplifting what is lost by the sun being debilitated here. The sun is debilitated in Libra and Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Uh, so there's, th this is like kind of a, in a way a balancing energy. Uh, although in another way, when you look at it, it kind of turns out that the sun is really good at doing inspirations that are not necessarily its own inspiration. Whatever this person does, they'll tend to be skilled at it. They'll tend to be objective, detached. They can take criticism. And they can really push themselves far into whatever the sun represents here. Uh, the sun in Libra representing business, mercantile ploys, love, relationships, communication, companies in a lot of ways. Libras tend to be very good at networking, connecting people to companies and being an ambassador for a brand and these sorts of things. This is a Libra who will really push themselves. Whatever they do, they'll be business savvy through the Libra and they'll know how to deal with people and they will know what they need to put in the arsenal of their argument. Uh, they know what arguments they want to have in order to be a good salesman on whatever it is that they're doing, or to sell people on a certain point. They'll make very good, logical, rational arguers. Uh, and this will just, their ability to assert themselves for the sake of what's rational and reasonable is going to really serve them no matter what. Uh, because Libra tends to base itself on seduction, on magnetism, on movement, on execution of people. Almost like they can not necessarily be a leader because they tend to follow the lead of a boss or some other higher player or power. But as a delegator of that larger <coughs> goal of a business partner or a boss or a company, this person can be a great ambassador and they will know how to apply their minds assertively so that they can get what they are trying to do. The sun in Libra for men and women tends to lose its grasp on its ability to fight for and stand up for its own instinctive <clears throat> thoughts and ideas uh, because again the sun is in Libra here. The vital energies are lost in what the other person thinks of them. You know, if the if they're thinking like they want to be harmonious and they don't they want to be known, they want to project themselves through being a good support, through being a harmonious piece of something else or someone else. And if they have to assert themselves or assert an authority or be real and true and tell someone what they don't want to what that person doesn't want to hear, the sun in Libra tends to flake and just not deliver it in the way that that person needs to hear. Because the sun in Libra doesn't want to compromise their lovingness or their feeling of being lovable, feeling of being, you know, refined and genteel and cerebral and like aesthetic. They don't want to come off as gross. But this desire to not come off grossly can often make them lack assertiveness uh, and even like personality. Uh, this Mars puts itself, the Mars in Capricorn here, expresses its energy in a way that is strong, that is logical and reasonable, so that they don't waste energy. Uh, and they have a the strong mind to, they don't even have to necessarily be assertive, but they are confident. Because of the Mars in Capricorn, whenever they do say something, they think long and discerningly and r through rational reason before they deliver what they're trying to say. And because of this, they don't need to be assertive or aggressive, which the Sun in Libra doesn't want to do anyway. 
This is a person who can dryly and firmly say what they need to say without people taking it personally. It just seems like what was needed to be said. And eventually you trust that this person is just doing what's right. Which is a very good thing because Libra can be so standing on the fence that people often don't know where their intentions are. They can come off as vague and confused and they don't know if their voice doesn't come out in a way that people clearly see is a proper assertive directive. You, if you have Libra, Sun with Mars and Capricorn, you only say things when you know you're right or when you know it's useful, when you know it's functional. And that way, people, even to express love or earnest passion or whatever it is, you're only still going to say it when it's like true to what you're feeling and feels like a useful part of the conversation of your lovemaking, especially for this Libra consciousness, really thinking about the other. They also know how to secure the needs of themselves. So this makes, again, this is a really good example of Mars really helping to compensate for the sun in Libra which the sun in Libra often has troubles for all the reasons that we know of the debilitated sun. So it's a great energy uh, for the sake of all things that Libra would want to do. Uh, you know, this, Mars is the right-hand man of the sun, of the sun's desires, the highest self, the self that wants to be projected through the sun needs to use Mars to get there. Mars is how you approach the mentality of conquering, how you approach the mentality of winning, how you approach the mentality of attaining your desires. Because the sun loses so much energy by being in Libra, by focusing so much energy on trying to think of what would look good to others, it loses energy towards its own directive, its own self. That's just the nature of having the sun in Libra and the sun being debilitated. In Vedic astrology and in any chart that you read, you have to consider when the sun is in Libra that it is damaged. It loses strength and it can't apply its aspects as strongly. It can't apply its, uh, you know, trines or squares or anything positive or negative all that strongly because it's not as blaringly apparent of an energy in the chart. The Mars in Capricorn, however, is. And I would consider that, you know, this is a person for whom, again, the Mars picks up on a lot of the lost energy, the feebleness, the flakiness that can come from Sun in Libra for men and women. Even women, women tend to jive with Sun and Libra better than men do. Men become feel like they become emasculated by expressing the Mars and Libra, but the Mars and Cap, sorry, Mars, men become emasculated, demasculated when the Sun is in Libra because they're looking, thinking about the other, thinking about aesthetics and appearance and all things Venus and not so much about what they can do to apply themselves and drill themselves into their goals, dreams, and desires. That's the sun in Libra, men, lose solar flare for that reason because the sun is a masculine planet and does better in more typically masculine signs, or at least signs closer to Aries, it's, uh, which is the sun's exaltation point. Uh, but also, yeah, sun. basically the sun does better in fire and water signs, typically. The reason for that is because the sun is, uh, the sun's friends are Jupiter, Mars, and the moon. And notice that Jupiter, Mars, sun, and moon all rule fire and water signs, right? Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, it's fire and water. Jupiter rules Pisces and Sagittarius, fire and water. And then the sun and the moon rules Leo and Cancer. So that, this is something, that's Vedic knowledge that I always like to add in. Uh, I'm a tropical Vedic astrologer as well as a Western astrologer. So with all of that being said, uh, the sun is not good friends with Venus. And the sun here is thinking about how it's going to look to others in Libra 
and it tries to get along that way. It tries to think with its reputation first, with its appearance first, rather than thinking from its heart, from its intuition, from its desires, from a clear, clandestine vision and ambition to express its inner, what it is, its inner truth. The sun in Libra does less of that. It gets, it gets what it wants by looking good to people and just says, as long as I'm good to people and I'm approachable, then people are basically, my energy is going to get something positive out of all of that. And so the Libra person learns how people, how humans work. Uh, and that's good enough for them. They can fit themselves into anything by doing that. They don't exactly carve for themselves a, an ambition that is unique and original to them because that's more of a Sun and Aries thing. They don't care about that. Uh, but by that being said, again, they often think so much about what others might enjoy that they lose the sense of how to grip and force because they're thinking about the other person in the moment, right? Now it's this, again, this Mars and Capricorn that compensates for this, allows them to assert themselves more because while their minds, their desires may be to please, to win by persuasion, their subliminal subconscious, their animal instinct is tuned to have the discipline to project properly this goal of the sun, which is to look good to others. They know how to project properly that goal and to feel themselves in their body moving towards the attainment of that, no, even, no matter what. That's what this Mars and Capricorn tends to be pushed towards, especially if Saturn is well placed and especially if Mars has good aspects and that kind of thing. Uh, and it can make for a much more assertive Libra personality. Now, I've just said my own spiel about this combination now. What I'm going to talk about now is the sexual nature of this Libra with Mars and Capricorn energy. The Mars, the fact that the Mars helps Libra to assert itself really lends a lot of positive things to this sexy the sexiness, the eroticness of the sun in Libra, which is already very cerebral, love-centric, romantic, atmospheric, sensitive person. The art of lovemaking is very much part of Libra's bag. And for men as well as women, it's this assertiveness of Mars and Capricorn that allows them to be sensitive but not so sensitive that they just become a starfish, as they say. You know, a starfish is when a person just lays back, opens their arms and legs, and just says, have your way with me. <laughs> you know, that's the starfish thing. This is a person who can be completely absorbed into their sensitivity to what the other person wants and what they want, and to serve that, to be receptive to that. And the Mars here will not let the passion, not let their thoughts, not let the thoughts of what should be obstruct their immediate body posture their immediate they're grabbing this body part and feeling it and enjoying the sensuality and all these things this person is doing that and enjoying it and putting pressure on it and being in the physical motions of it while at the same time thinking in their head i wonder if there's anything i can do to complement this animal posture and magnetism and charisma that I'm drawing out of my partner. The Libra stands on top of that and moves the pieces around in a juicy and interesting and explorative way, in a receptive way to show that they're listening to the partner. But it's this essentially this Mars and Capricorn that is a moving body that is very in its muscle structure, that's in its instincts, that is grabbing and squeezing and touching and doing all those raw animal and yet and passionate but yet controlled orderly logical graceful artful parts of sexuality this is a this can be a very tantric person it's the person who gets raptured in the passion of libra of venus of love making but yet who is discerning and controlled and knows how to hold its instincts in order to get the most to bring the cream out of the sexual experience without letting it erupt too quickly without just trying to get to the end of it so mars and capricorn who will get to the end of it will get to the destination but will be 
turning knobs and squeezing nipples and f burning with passion and looking at every moment of how how can I make this easier on myself? How can I apply my body energy to make this as juicy as possible for the both of us? All of that is being thought about throughout this the whole period leading to the destination. So it can be made for a very hot energy, a very capable lover who is also passionate and juicy and sensitive at the same time. Now, before we talk about, uh, I'm going to give you guys a little reading from Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega. First thing we're going to do is talk a bit about Sun in Libra, and then we're going to have a reading of the Sun in Libra. What, what does Mars in Capricorn bring to the sexual nature of Mars and of the Sun in Libra? Now, so this is the Sun in Libra. We're looking at their turn-ons and turn-offs. A wise partner knows how to whet your appetite for lovemaking with subtle flirting and mildly provocative suggestions. Libra is very much in the mental sphere, in the Venus, the gesture. Not just the hard animal pumping, but how did it come off? What's your fluid intrigue that draws through the magnetism of your littlest, tiniest actions and eye movements? Libra is turned on to all of those little how it comes off, the gesture, not just what it is, but how it comes off. You, as a Libra, get off on the sensual accoutrement of romance, such as sultry nightwear, silky sheets, and soft music. A few whispered words of desire speak volumes to the Libra soul. Your lifelong fantasy of romantic courtship and ideal love inclines towards elegant sex with nothing crude or tacky to offend your good taste and delicate sensibilities. Again, the Mars and Capricorn can add much more refinement even to this. Mars and Capricorn just adds a refinement and logical reason and purpose and discipline to what, it even at magnetism and passion, but it's mostly an over-the-top refinement in the proper sense of where to put that animal passion. Mars can, and Capricorn can bring that refinement to the mission of any sun. In this case, it being very etheric, appearance-heavy, cerebral, mental, in the gesture. <laughs> can make for a very classy type of personality. Because you're seeking perfection, you can create a bliss-filled fantasy in your mind that often seems more real than anything in the world around you. Which, this will always be true about Libra. The Libra will try to, will think and anticipate that a lover will be one way, or think that they'll understand psychically, but the lover might not understand. And the, the lover might not live up to the ideals that the Libra sun seeks. But Mars and Capricorn, again, helps to aid this because Mars and Capricorn is pointed, is experimental, is scientific, and will not apply themselves for a long time to a relationship that doesn't practically work out. No matter how much the sun in Libra pines to have this perfect lover who I think just completes me perfectly, Mars is too rational. It's like the example I used in the Mars and Capricorn episode if you want to watch that it's like a poisoned apple the libra pines for the beauty of the apple the sweetness that they know it's going to taste like and they know that it might have a bit of poison in it but libra says maybe i can heal them maybe getting that poison out is a part of what it all is but the mars and capricorn here is just essentially going to be like, look, there's plenty of apples out there there's plenty of beauty plenty of good people if this one's poisoned I'm not going to waste my time with it. I know that love, in, that there's function, the universe can be functional. And I know that I've experienced ways in which the universe can be functional. If this is not functional, then I'm not going to waste my time with it. And they'll transmit to their lovers right from the beginning. They're not going to dick around with someone. They're not going to get involved with someone who might fire up 
a possible love connection if they know that it's ultimately not going to be rewarding for both parties. It's very rare for Sun and Libra, because Sun and Libra is so hopeful, looking so deeply into the mirage, the shadow, the image of what love could be. This is a Mars and Capricorn, which deeply reduces and cuts and checks to make sure that they don't involve themselves in an energy field that they that is ultimately going to be damning. So your ideal lover discovers the details of your dream scenario as a as the Libra. Your lover discovers the details of your dream scenario and acts them out with you. Together you devise new ways of sharing and increasing your sensual pleasure. Since balance is important to you, you yearn for an intimate union with just the right amount of give and take. Making love helps you to feel complete and you're capable of putting your own needs on hold in order to please or accommodate your lover. It's all very much Sun and Libra stuff. Although there's little truly wild or abandoned in Libra's nature, erotic teasing acts as an enticing turn-on that adds spice and heightens your sexual ecstasy. A sexy strip tease, deep enticing kisses, and languid stroking with a feather raise your temperature to a fever pitch. And all these things are all the more true because the Mars and Capricorn can grit its teeth and say, I am so fucking deeply enjoying this and I'm not going to stop it. You know, whereas other placements of Mars, this li this Libra might just drop it all and say, oh, or, or just mar mar just start moving towards the lovemaking because they're so shook up by how teasing it is. This is a Mars and Capricorn that brings the cream out of the milk. <laughs> The thought of using sex toys may shock you, but artfully employed, these toys these may intensify your lovemaking. For Libra, the brain is the most sensitive erogenous zone, and talking about sex and reading erotic literature with your lover turns you on, as does trying the sexy stuff you've been reading about and discussing. All things erotic is what that's just what Libra, that's like their sun, the sun, the inspiration, the self, seeks to project itself very deeply through how it can enact itself as a sexual persona, as an enjoyer of life. And the Mars in Capricorn here is very serious about that playful activity. Very cool, right? Again, Mars in Capricorn is just going to do very well whatever the sun wants. It's going to apply itself rigidly to whatever the sun wants to do. Now, that was a reading from Erotic Astrology of just like Libra, okay? This last reading is going to be a combination of sun and Libra with Mars and Capricorn. What does having Mars and Capricorn bring to everything we've just said about Libra sun? Phyllis Vega says... Outwardly, you appear as easygoing as other Librans, yet a fierce determination to succeed is lurking just beneath the surface here. Here we have Venus and Saturn, both being planets that are actually friendly to each other. It's one good thing about this combination is that we've got an air sign and an earth sign. And earth sign and air signs are always ruled by planets that are friendly to each other. Notice that, if see what I mean here, Venus rules Taurus and Libra, Earth and Air. Gemini, uh, Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, Earth and Air. Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius, Earth and Air, right? So if you guys can see what's being expressed here, uh, Venus, Mercury, and Saturn are all good, good friends with each other. They're more about what's external to ourselves, uh, whereas the other planets are more of like the internal thing. So the, the sun here is interested in others, in people, in culture, in ideas, 
in refinement, in class, in social structure, in impressing others based on dignity and status, reputation, and these sorts of things. It's not necessarily, I mean, that's, it can be kind of denaturing to the sun, because the sun is more about that internal experience, about the fire and water, uh, rather than the air and earth. But it's where the sun is, and Mars not only is in the best place it can be, but it's complementing here by that rational reason that Mars is expressing through Capricorn. There is a double aesthetic of that earthy air respect for others' appreciation of us, respect for the method, respect for mutual universal standards. So this is a Libra who looks to look good through others, which is kind of what Libra often does. They want to be seen as good in the eyes of others. Seventh house, other. And they do it in a way which everybody recognizes a universally relatable and acceptable and impressive method or way or path. That's the Mars and Capricorn finding the conventional way of doing something that everybody can appreciate, right? So this could be a Libra who has like class and who's really trying to look good and who's probably wearing clothes that are fashionable but yet professional looking. So professional person who gets professional contacts and probably has a desire to, to look good and well uh, doing whatever it does. And they can probably get that if they choose to try to do that. You need to be with someone with a strong sense of purpose who shares your goals and ambitions in life. In the bedroom, you are a study of contrasts, at times sentimental and affectionate, affectionate at other times lusty and passionate. Your sexual feelings may run hot and cold, but when they're hot, they sizzle. Endurance is your forte and your appetite for sensual pleasures increases over time. The longer you and your lover are together, the more uninhibited you are in his or her embrace. During the wilder moments, you pull out all the stops and you give full reign to your sexual needs and desires. Again, this is the funny, awesome, two-way significance of Mars being reined in by Saturn, but yet still having an open channel for the heights of its animal energy. Saturn even can be quite animalistic and survival-driven and primal. For Mars to be a, a similarly primal planet, being reined in by Saturn, but still being channeled by Saturn's animal energy, it's a very powerful thing. And it really helps to allow a Libra who is usually not that surrendering that giving because they're trying to control they're trying to refine trying to make sure they're a good serviceable person to the lover this is a Libra who can like wink wink and like look and be like look I'm ready to get just as passionate and lost in this thing as you are and I'm ready to be here I'm gonna do what I gotta do I'm gonna tickle this and I'm gonna hit you with that and I'm not gonna leave the scene mentally even though i'm getting absolutely lost in the juicy passion i'm still here baby and i'm ready to play the dance with you it's a great energy for love making i hope you guys enjoyed that i hope that it has inspired some thoughts i'm dustin cormay for how to rock astrology this has been sun and libra with mars and capricorn keep your eyes peeled folks because i always got more of this stuff going on uh if you enjoyed it feel free to like and comment and if again if you enjoyed it feel free to subscribe because i've got more videos coming out all the time i've got my sextrology videos other transit videos and i've always got more things that might keep you interested if you dug this video so stay in touch with me folks and i'll see you guys on the next one